Hi Will, just finishing up my lunch break. Um, Norris has been on top form trying to really grind my self-esteem into the ground. I've, I've been f hanging out a lot with Mary and um, Henry, I suppose, considering uh, he's always kind of around. And Norris has taken it upon herself to constantly remind me that I'm not actually their friend and that my role to them is just as a representative of Mansfield Park or my interacting with them is just a personal favour to Mr and Mrs Bertram. She says that I'm not to fraternise with them as the other Bertram children do and that... Well essentially without actually saying it, she's told me I ought to know my place. As if I could actually forget my place with this family. I couldn't be more different from this family unless they were dressed all up in their finery like an episode of Downton Abbey and I was in the background singing chim chimney chim chim charoo. Maybe that's harsh. Admittedly, I, it does sound mean and I have felt a bit more relaxed since the departure of Mr and Mrs Rushworth. Rhea was never that bothered about me and uh, oh, Julia's gone up to visit them now and I'm sure that uh, Rhea will rub in her smug married life so much to Julia that she'll be itching to come home. Especially when Julia's only reprieve is Rory. Poor, boring, sweet Rory. Eddie's doing a great Invisible Man impression at the moment as well. He's, uh, when he's not working, he's helping Mr Bertram or he's volunteering at a local youth centre or he's with you-know-who. Although speaking of Mary and her positive peer pressure, I applied for that Antigua job. I mean, and my own days at Mansfield might be numbers, which is weird to think of. Some days I change how I feel about it, okay? I, some days I'm, I don't know, I, I mean it's been my home for so long and I know I'll miss it so much and I'll miss people here. But then days like this where it's just been really lousy and I'm not seeing the people that I'll miss, I just think it'll be an adventure, a fresh start. Plus if Mr Bertram trusts me with the start-up of the new place it'll be very flattering. But I probably won't get it. Anyway, we're not going to know for another month or so, so there's no real point worrying about it. Not that that thought is going to stop me worrying about it. Angie? There. You haven't seen Henry about, have you? Not unless he's under the bed. Well, I don't know what you kids get up to when I'm not around. <laughs> Why did you think you'd be in here? You know... No. Well, Henry thinks he can just slack off and twiddle his thumbs because I haven't finished the final report budget yet. Ooh, water cooler drama. I love it. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Henry is just really annoying to argue with because he doesn't really get agitated or angry. If he was any more laid back, he'd be horizontal. <laughs> Thank you. Henry? Hello. Ah, sibling. I've been looking everywhere for you. I know. I know. Mrs. Norris accosted me and said that you've been looking for me. She said that you were in Francis's room. I was like, who or what is a Francis? <laughs> what else did you think that Frankie was short for? Frank, obviously. <laughs> okay, so what's Henry short for? Henrietta, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Oh, charming. What? Daredevil wasn't going to rewatch itself. Well, I hate to be a stickler for the details, but you are here to work, yes? Have you finished the, the finances for the final report yet? No, but... Then how am I supposed to work? Well, maybe you could just tidy up after yourself. Your desk is a mountain of old blueprints and broken pencils. I wouldn't be surprised if a family of raccoons had taken residence in there. Get them to do it then. <laughs> so how are you, anyway? Yeah, I'm fine. How's Will? He's good, he's good. Good. You're filling him in on the only way is Mansfield. <laughs> What's on the agenda today? Nothing much, just catching him up with everything. Talking about how Julia went to go and see Rhea. Oh yeah, Rhea and Rory, they moved into London, didn't they? Love's young bliss. Yeah, let's talk about how Julia went to go and visit them. How is she? I miss her, she's a right diamond. Yeah, um, she's fine. She's finished uni, so she's letting her hair down a bit. Uh, I think she's going to spend a day with Yates later. God! Yates? I haven't heard his name since he... since his... 
quick exit that time when everything kicked off. You know, I think that he had a thing for Julia. Not as severe a thing that poor Tom had for him, though. Oh, don't be mean. I'm not. I'm not. I genuinely feel for the bloke. You know, we've all been there, barking up the wrong tree. I have. I know I have. You know, I always miss the filming sometimes. It's really nice, everyone being together. Yeah. It was a really fun atmosphere on the filming days. It was something different. I feel a bit lethargic now that it's over. If we had a couple more days, we probably could have finished the film. Somehow, I don't think the world is mourning the loss of Lover's Vows. <laughs> don't get me wrong. The film was lousy. But there was drama. People were bickering. I loved it. You know, there's nothing better than when people are truly bitchy. I don't think I've ever been happier. <laughs> I disagree. I think that that film was upsetting a lot of people, and I'm glad that it ended when it did. In fact, I have wished that Mr Bertram had arrived home earlier so that it could have ended sooner. Yeah, you're right. We were probably being too loud. And I think Mr Bertram was right in saying that we were probably disturbing the guests. You know, we were getting out of control. It was probably best that we stopped when we did. Has anyone else got whiplash or is it just me? We did have some fun times though, didn't we? You must admit it. Like Rushworth and his 42 bloody lines. <laughs> For God's sake, you would have thought that Yates had asked him to memorise War and Peace. I tell you though, 42 lines from Rushy was probably 42 lines too many. If I were Rhea, I would probably keep my fingers crossed and hope that he doesn't say 42 lines during the entire marriage. <laughs> She's too good for him. Far too good. I like Rory. I like him a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that you two were BFFs. If there was a reason why, like, everybody wanted a list of reasons why you were probably a solid gold angel, then, amongst others, that has to be number one. The fact that you can put up with a 30 second conversation with that man. You have the patience of a saint. He's a really sweet guy and his heart's in the right place. Don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against the guy. I feel for him. It's not my fault that Mother Nature didn't give him a brain. Henry. <laughs> what? <sighs> I'm doing that thing again, aren't I? Where I think I'm really funny, but... I'm actually being a douchebag. Yep, yep. <sighs> Say no more. I apologise. What's the time? Oh God, she's gonna kill me! Norris? Yep! Oh, we've got a delivery of toiletries coming in and uh, I think she left most of the heavy lifting to me because my upper body strength is terrible. Ah! Well, you, you go, I'll, I'll sort out the camera. Thank you! Bye, Francis. Bye. What? Frankie's in trouble. She's got to carry loads of heavy things up the stairs. She could probably use some help. Oh, right, yes! Frankie! Wait! Do you need a hand? <laughs>